At the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a great chaos in the world, and eighteen feudal lords attacked Dongzhuo. In front of Sisui Pass, a man who capsized on the Wujiang River, with his soul pierced, had just killed the unparalleled general Pan Feng Xuaxiong. In a moment of confusion, he was fortunate enough to gain the courage of a tyrant. In the camp of the feudal lords, the lords were frowning because of the bravery and invincibility of Hua Xiong. Guan Yu, who was wielding a horse bow, squinted his phoenix eyes and made a military order, saying, I am willing to go and behead Hua Xiong. If not, please behead me. Keywords of the Novel Three Kingdoms Opening Slash Guan Yu with no pop-ups, Three Kingdoms Opening Slash Guan Yu TXT Complete Collection Download, Three Kingdoms Opening Slash Guan Yu Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 The Braveness of the Overlord and the Blade Cutting of the Overlord You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 1 the braveness of the overlord and the blade cutting of the overlord in the late eastern Han dynasty, there was a great chaos in the world. Dong Zhuo occupied Luoyang, deposed the emperor, and appointed the younger prince Chen Lu as the emperor, tearing off the last fig leaf of the Han dynasty. Countless people were shocked to realize that the 400-year-old Han dynasty was so weak. Chao Chao failed to kill Dong Zhuo, so he offered his sword and left. Subsequently, the anti-Dong banner was raised, and people from all sides responded one after another in front of Sisui Pass, swords and spears shine brightly, and flags cover the sky. Hua Xiong sat on the warhorse, looking around at the numerous soldiers wearing armor and wielding swords. He then looked at the blood-stained three-pointed, two-edged sword in his hand, and for a moment seemed a bit dazed. In the late Eastern Han Dynasty 18 Marquises Conquering Dong Have you become Hua Xiong yourself? Guan Yu's Exclusive Background Board Looking down at the head hanging under the neck of his warhorse, and then at the axe held by the headless corpse not far in front of his warhorse, as well as the words of this guy claiming to be General Pan Fong. He couldn't help but shudder all over, a chill rising from his tailbone and instantly reaching the top door cover, then spreading throughout his body. I just feel like my whole body is stiff. Hua Xiong's exclusive background board has already been cut by his predecessor Hua Xiong. As far as I know, isn't it my turn to cut off Guan Yu's exclusive background board next? Grasp X. At this point, a pure mouthful of national essence involuntarily blurted out. Is this too harsh? Didn't I just recite Lu Bang's Song of the Strong Wind when I was on a boat trip in Wujiang? Suddenly, a gust of wind overturned my boat, causing me to sink to the bottom of the river. A very sharp object, suspected to be a broken blade, pierced through me, but it's not worth it. How could I still let myself cross? Even if I crossed over, it's okay. I even crossed over and became Hua Xiong, and after killing Pan Fong, I became Hua Xiong. Isn't this killing people? Is this killing oneself at the bottom of the river without relieving hatred, so let oneself come back to life and then kill again? I just had a sudden idea and suddenly recited the song of the strong wind. There's really no other meaning. For a moment, Hua Xiong wanted to cover his face and cry bitterly. Live as a hero, and die as a hero. I still miss Xiang Yu and refuse to cross Jiang Dong. The victorious and defeated soldiers have unpredictable family matters, and they are shameless men. It is unknown how talented and talented the children of Jiang Dong will make a comeback. Hua Xiong sat on the warhorse and immediately recited two poems. He didn't dare to mention the matter of the Feng Gu anymore, all of which were praises and sighs for Xiang Yu. He hesitated. He is really cowardly. Wearing Hua Xiong at this moment is really terrifying. Commander, how are you doing? How about? Let's go back to Sisui Pass. A voice of concern from the soldiers came from the side, looking at Hua Xiong with great concern. Not long ago, after his commander in chief beheaded General Pan Fong with a sword, he suddenly showed a painful expression on his face, his complexion instantly turned pale, and sweat poured down. Lying on the back of the horse. 
Without waiting for himself and others to come forward and inspect, the governor sat up straight again. But his face remained pale, his expression was dazed, and he didn't know what he was muttering. This made the soldiers very worried and didn't pay much attention, so they quickly spoke up to inquire. But I didn't think much about it either. I just thought it was Commander Huaxiong, who had fought several times before using the wrong strength and feeling unwell for a while. Upon hearing these words, Hua Xiong's heart moved and he decided to run away if he couldn't fight. This is indeed a good solution. Who said they must stay here and be tough with Guan Yu? But as soon as this idea arose in his heart, he abandoned it again. Return to Siswi Pass. Can I really return to Siswi Pass at this moment? At this moment, he had already recalled the incident of his predecessor Hua Xiong's death. His death was sudden. After killing Pan Fong, he suddenly suffered unbearable abdominal pain and died in just a short moment. From the symptoms at that time, it wasn't a sudden death, it should have been a severe poison. He thought so and raised his hand, only to see his nails and ten fingers appear black. However, this black color is rapidly fading away. And its predecessor, Hua Xiong, also drank a bowl of wine handed over by Li Su and ate a bowl of steamed meat when he led troops out of Siswi Pass, which was used for marching. And Li Su was the deputy general of Siswi Pass. After Hua Xiong left, he led the remaining troops to guard the Siswi Pass. In order to prevent accidents at Siswi Pass, every time Hua Xiong leads troops to rush out and kill, the gate of Siswi Pass will be immediately inserted from inside. Wait until Hua Xiong leads the troops back, and then open up Hua Xiong to enter. At this time, the bandits had not yet been completely defeated and led their troops back. It was not easy for the alliance of feudal lords led by Yuan Shao to chase them from behind. And Li Su, this person, chose to take action against himself today. In this situation, he may not necessarily open or close the door and let himself in. The likelihood of this happening is very high. Once it really happens, at that time, the morale of the troops I lead will definitely be in chaos. At Yuan Shao's place, there are 18 feudal lords gathered, and there is also Guan Yu who specializes in suppressing Hua Xiong. In addition to Guan Yu, there are also Zhang Fei, Gong Suanzan, and others. Once they arrive, they will definitely not be able to survive. The matter suddenly became tricky. We can't move forward, we can't retreat. No matter how you look at it, it's all a dead end. Are you going to surrender yourself? As long as he surrenders quickly enough, Guan Yu cannot kill himself but. Can we really survive? Surrender in one's current identity for no reason, who wouldn't doubt it? And his predecessor, who had already killed so many soldiers and horses on Yuan Shao's side before, had already formed a deep blood feud. Even if Guan Yu allows himself to surrender, the others will not allow him to surrender. Especially at this time, Lu De er is also there. Hua Xiong is really afraid of this guy, and he also said something sinister like, Don't you see Dong Zhuo, Ding Yuan er, at this moment, we have truly encountered a desperate situation. Is it true that I, Hua Xiong, really want to die here? He couldn't help feeling a sense of melancholy in his heart. After this feeling of melancholy rose, Hua Xiong's body shook violently again, and then a look of extreme surprise appeared on his face. Because just now, although I didn't know what was going on, there was a thought rising from my heart, which was that I had gained the courage to dominate. He clenched his fist tightly, feeling an explosive force gathering. I casually drew out my sword from my waist and couldn't help but be stunned. In my original memory, it should have been an incredibly sharp sword, but at some point, it turned into a mottled broken blade. On the broken blade handle, there are four equally mottled ancient texts. Although he had never seen it before, Hua Xiong recognized it at a glance at this moment. These four words are The Overlord of Western Chu is this your own cheat on the account? Hua Xiong couldn't help but be both surprised and delighted. What is a village where mountains and rivers are heavy and there is no way out, and where willows are hidden and flowers are bright? 
This is it. A sense of desolation and sadness rose in Hua Xiong's chest. Then a thought arose in my heart. To destroy the Han dynasty. After such thoughts arose, the inexplicable obsession quickly dissipated. Hua Xiong carefully felt it, and could no longer feel anything. It seems that those obsessions, after giving themselves the courage to dominate and expressing their wishes to themselves, cannot persist and dissipate looking back on the life of Xiang Yu, the king of Chu, and his final ending, Hua Xiong couldn't help but feel a little melancholy in his heart. However, it quickly became joyful. The destruction of the Han dynasty is a long dot term goal. At least with the bravery of the overlord, the crisis in front of me no longer exists. Guan Yu, Li Su. One wants to make himself a background board and make a name for himself, while the other secretly uses poison. He he, now it depends on who makes their background board. Whoever will handle it. I won't go back, my body is fine, it's just that I just had a fork in the stomach. Hua Xiong said to his personal soldiers beside him. Then, holding the Bawang broken blade, he sat on a horse and looked towards the camp of Yuan Shao and others, waiting for Guan Yu to come out in Yuan Shaoying's village, the atmosphere appears solemn. Hua Xiong's strong execution of several generals made Yuan Shao and others feel heavy-hearted. Only behind Gong Sun Zan, Lu Guanzhang and three others, with a cold smile on their faces, end of this chapter. If chapter 2 fails, please behead someone. You are listening at novelfull.audio. If chapter 2 fails, please behead someone. In the tent of Yuan Shao, the leader of the coalition army, Yuan Shao, sat in the first place, followed by Yuan Shao's younger brother, Yuan Shu, and Yuan Road. A few days ago, the younger brother of the prime minister of Jibei, who did not listen to orders, resorted to military action without authorization, resulting in the loss of many soldiers and horses. He was also beheaded by the servant of Huaxiong. I don't want Sun Wentai, the fierce tiger from Jiangdong, to be defeated by Hua Xiong this time, causing casualties. My younger brother Yuan Shu's brave general Yu Shi fought against Hua Xiong and was killed by him within three rounds. General Pan Fong, under the command of Governor Han, was also beheaded by Hua Xiong. Everyone, what should we do next? Yuan Shao sat here and looked at everyone, saying so. Everyone was speechless. One person from Hua Xiong caused them to suffer consecutive losses and setbacks, leaving many people with no confidence in their hearts. I don't want to send my own soldiers and generals to die. Yuan Shao waited for a while, his gaze scanning the faces of various feudal lords, but no one spoke up. He couldn't help but let out a long sigh and said, Unfortunately, my general Yen Liang, a literary clown, has never been here. But even if one person is here, they have already killed Hua Xiong. How can a small Hua Xiong be allowed to act recklessly here Yuan Shao side, half true and half false? On the one hand, he did feel that it was a great pity that the two generals under his command, Yen Liang and Wen Cho, were not here. On the other hand, it is also intentional to say so, to save the face of various people and provoke them. As the words fell, several people blushed and lowered their heads in the big tent, but no one spoke. Upon seeing this, Zhang Fei was about to take a step forward and speak out, but was quickly grabbed by Lu Bei's hand. Quietly shaking his head at him, gesturing for him to remain silent. As a result, Guan Yu, who was standing on the other side of him, suddenly took a few steps forward, bypassed Lu Bei in front of him, and shouted loudly, I am not talented, my martial arts skills are not excellent, but dealing with just a few Hua Xiong is not a problem. I am willing to go and behead Hua Xiong's head and offer it to my account. Lu Bei was startled at the words and quickly reached out to pull, but it was too late and he had to give up. At this moment, the gaze of everyone in the big tent had already converged on Guan Yu. It seems a bit unexpected. Yuan Shao felt a sense of joy in his heart, as his provocation had worked. He looked at Gong Sun Zan and said, Bo Gui, who is this person? Gong Sun Zan said, This is the second brother of my younger brother Lu Xuanda. 
When Gong Suanzan said this to Yuan Shao, he did not mention the often talked about Zhongshan Prince Jing as the Queen of Lu Bei. After all, Lu Sheng, the Prince of Zhongshan, was the son of Emperor Xiao Jing and the brother of Emperor Xiaowu, who had been dead for three hundred years. And this Prince Jing of Zhongshan is extremely capable of giving birth, with over one hundred and twenty surviving sons. Over the past three hundred years, heaven knows how many offspring have been bred. And the Han dynasty implemented the system of promoting gratitude, so many descendants of Lu Sheng have long been ordinary. Now go to Zhongshan State in Zhuo County and find someone surnamed Lu. Nine and a half out of ten are all descendants of King Jing of Zhongshan. People without knowledge, upon hearing it suddenly, may feel intimidated, but those present are all those with social status and knowledge. If they were to speak about it again, it would be somewhat difficult to speak of. At least Gong Suanzan couldn't say it. Yuan Shao nodded and said, What is your current position? Upon hearing this, Gong Sunzan hesitated and said, Now follow my brother Shuanda and act as a horse archer. This statement made many people secretly laugh in their hearts. The former general sitting at Yuan Shao's command, Yuan Shu, the prefect of Nanyang, suddenly changed his color. Without waiting for Yuan Shao to speak, he shouted loudly, You bully our lords and have no generals under your command. Even if you are a small horse archer, how dare you speak wildly here? Cross me out. Yuan Shao frowned slightly and did not speak out to stop. Although I felt that Yuan Gaolu was a bit impolite and spoke before me, what he said was not without reason. I have gathered eighteen vassals here, each with many generals under my command. Where did I get this little horse archer to make a move here? Chao Chao, who had never spoken up, withdrew his gaze from Guan Yu and quickly spoke out to stop him, saying, Don't be angry on the highway. Since this person speaks big words, there must be courage and martial arts in his body. It's better to let him give it a try. If he can't win, it's not too late to punish him again. As soon as Chao Chao finished speaking, Yuan Shao's voice rang out. If you let a small horse archer fight, you will surely be ridiculed by Hua Xiong. There is no one here to use us. Yuan Shu wanted to speak, but when he heard what he wanted to say, it had already been spoken by Yuan Shao, and he immediately stopped speaking. Chao Chao smiled and said, This person looks decent. If we don't put it bluntly, how could Hua Xiong know he's a horse archer? But if we are defeated, it will inevitably undermine our military power and fuel the thieves' arrogance. If you cannot win, please behead someone. Guan Yu squinted his phoenix eyes, clasped his fists, spoke out, and directly issued a military order. You need to know that this military order was not made casually. Gong Sun Zan looked at Guan Yu and spoke out a reminder. After all, Guan Yu is the second younger brother of Shuanda's younger brother. Shuanda has a good relationship with him and once studied under the tutelage of the great scholar Lu Ji and Wu Yang, so it's necessary for him to play a roundabout at this moment. Guan Yu punched Gong Suanzan and said, I naturally know, but I am still willing to issue a military order. If I cannot defeat Hua Xiong, please behead someone. Gong Suanzan stopped talking, and he also knew that Shuanda and his two sworn brothers had some skills. Okay, since you have issued a military order, then go and fight against Hua Xiong. Yuan Shao nodded. Guan Yu clenched his fists, lifted his sword, and was about to leave. But he was stopped by Chao Chao and said, Wait a moment, drink this bowl of heroic liquor before going. Guan Yu turned his head to take a look at the steaming bowl of wine and said, Let's put down the wine. I'll go back soon, and it's not too late to come back and drink with Hua Xiong's head. After speaking, he turned around and left. What he said made many people in the account couldn't help but sneer, thinking that this little horse archer was too arrogant. Second brother, be careful. As Guan Yu was about to leave the tent, Lu Bei couldn't help but give a voice of advice. Guan Yu stopped and turned to look at Lu Bei, saying, Big brother, don't worry. Hua Xiong is just a scalper. I'll go and kill him, like taking something from a bag. After speaking, 
I opened the big tent and walked away with great strides, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Feather's Divine Courage, Unparalleled for Eternity You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Feather's Divine Courage, Unparalleled for Eternity Commander, there are thieves coming out again. Beside Hua Xiong, a private soldier spoke out. At this moment, Hua Xiong's gaze had already fallen on the group of people who came out of the Kanta United Army camp. About a hundred or ten people came out. I don't know if it's because of the bravery of the overlord that Hua Xiong's vision has improved. Although not less than three miles away, at this moment, one could vaguely see one of them, wearing a green hat. Think back on what I remember about Guan Yu's attire. And after Pan Feng's death, the order of appearance for Guan Yu to continue killing Hua Xiong has basically been determined, and that person is Guan Yu. After a moment, as we got closer, we were already able to see the appearance of the person wearing the green hat from afar. I saw that person, with red phoenix eyes, lying silkworm eyebrows, with a face like a heavy jujube, a beard two feet long, looking majestic and imposing. After seeing this appearance, Hua Xiong was completely certain that the coming general was indeed Guan Yu. Thinking of Guan Yu's reputation and military prowess, he instinctively felt a bit nervous, after all, this was a presence that specialized in suppressing Hua Xiong. However, after feeling the explosive power inside my body and confirming that I had truly gained the courage to dominate, these anxieties in my heart disappeared instantly. He shook the three-pointed, two-edged knife from his handshake and sat on the horse, ready and Guan Yu had already arrived almost two miles away from Hua Xiong. He held a big knife in one hand and a reins in the other, and fiercely knocked on the horse's belly. Sitting down, the warhorse hissed and rushed out towards Hua Xiong. Following more than a hundred soldiers behind his back, he immediately shook them off from afar. It's like a single horse charging towards Hua Xiong. But Guan Yu was not afraid at all. It was only those so dot called famous generals who were too incompetent that allowed a small Hua Xiong to show off his power. What did Hua Xiong calculate when he came here at this moment? What do the soldiers and horses around Hua Xiong count as? They are just the top performers in the label sales. The warhorse galloped at full speed, carrying Guan Yu towards Hua Xiong. Upon seeing this, Hua Xiong knocked on his warhorse and also stepped forward. Is it Guan Yu and Guan Yunchang who came here? He shouted and asked. Upon hearing Hua Xiong's inquiry, Guan Yu couldn't help but be taken aback. How could Hua Xiong know about him? When did you become so famous? A dying person, knowing my name is also an honor for you. The sound fell, and the two were already quite close. Guan Yu held his sword in both hands, squinted his phoenix eyes, without hesitation, and decisively slashed at Hua Xiong. Upon hearing Guan Yu's words, Hua Xiong sneered inwardly, wild and proud enough, which was indeed quite true of Guan Yu. But there is also some anger rising in my heart. With a tremble of the three-pointed, two-bladed sword in his hand, he also slashed at Guan Yu with the sound of breaking through the air. When Guan Yu saw Hua Xiong wielding his sword to greet him, his expression remained unchanged, and his heart was filled with pride. The trajectory of the big knife in his hand remained unchanged, and he swung forward in the face of the three-pointed and two-edged sword that Hua Xiong welcomed. It's like cutting with one knife, even if there's a mountain in front of him, he wants to cut it open with one knife. He is ready to shake off the sword in Hua Xiong's hand with one blow and then slay Hua Xiong with another blow. Chang. At the next moment, the sound of the clash of gold and iron had already sounded. Powerful force suddenly emanated from the handle of the large knife in hand. The hands that made Guan Yu grip the knife were numb, his arms trembled, and he almost couldn't hold the big knife in his hand. Guan Yu was momentarily bewildered his face full of arrogance, and his arrogance disappeared instantly. Um. How could Hua Xiong be so brave? Previously, so many generals were defeated and died at the hands of Hua Xiong one after another. It turned out that it was not those generals who were incompetent, 
but Hua Xiong's martial arts skills were too amazing. Many thoughts flashed through his mind in an instant. And Hua Xiong, with a single slash, had already tried to distinguish between Guan Yu's virtual and real abilities. I am determined in my heart. I have to say that the courage of the overlord is awesome. Sure enough, the divine courage of you is unparalleled throughout history. After El Yubu's death, everyone looked like Guan Yu, who was the first to be advertised. In front of him, he was not a match. Just Guan Yu, that's all. Hua Xiong shouted out loud. At the same time, with a single movement of the three-pointed, two-edged knife in his hand, he headed straight towards Guan Yu. The momentum is like lightning. At this moment, Guan Yu dared not have any arrogance anymore. He looked down upon him in his heart and put away all his possessions, putting in a twelve-point spirit. With a movement of both arms, the green dragon sword in his hand, which appeared somewhat peculiar in shape, was cut out boldly, and the blade swept through the air, like a flash of lightning. Two warhorses roared and roared, and on top of them, the two tiger generals each wielded their swords and fought fiercely, as if two tigers were fighting each other the more Guan Yu fought, the more he became frightened, and his pride was greatly reduced. Faced with this Hua Xiong, he was only able to parry and had no ability to fight back. In an instant, the two had already engaged in eighteen rounds of confrontation. And Guan Yu was already on the verge of being defeated, facing numerous dangers and being beheaded several times. Roar! Guan Yu let out a loud roar. When fighting with others, he always appears quiet, and at this moment, he is being beaten and roaring loudly. With the help of roaring, I became bold for myself and worked hard to extract all the strength from my body, competing desperately with Hua Xiong. So just now, I can withstand the three-pointed, two-edged sword that Hua Xiong slashed. But a face that was already red became even redder as a result. Hua Xiong, I am not a match. Although I don't want to admit it, I have to admit it. And Hua Xiong also nodded secretly. It is not unreasonable for Guan Yu to have such a great reputation in his history. He truly possesses his abilities. He possesses the courage of a tyrant, and he is still able to fight against him for dozens of rounds without losing his life. This alone can explain too much. But that's all for now. He shook his hand and then swung his three-pointed, two-edged sword towards Guan Yu again, with a powerful and heavy force, opening and closing wide. A knife is as fast as a knife. With one blow, Guan Yu's big sword was swung open, and with another blow, it was chopped down again. Guan Yu was shocked. His sword had just been swung open and he didn't have time to retract the block, so he quickly dodged. But how can we dodge the past? The left shoulder was stabbed by a three-pointed, two-edged knife. Hua Xiong's three-pointed, two-edged sword was already sharp in his hand, and now with strong support, it directly tore open Guan Yu's armor, causing him to bleed profusely. Two horses crisscrossed, and Guan Yu's heart was filled with shock. Sweat fell down from his forehead. He gritted his teeth and grasped his sword, controlling his warhorse to continue the battle. Hua Xiong also turned his horse's head and held a knife to confront Guan Yu. Chang. Another piercing clash of gold and iron. Guan Yu felt a strong force strike, his arms trembling, and his big knife in his hand was shaken and flew away. And he seemed to know that with this blow, he couldn't hold the big knife in his hand. So at the moment when the big knife was released, he drew his sword and stabbed towards Hua Xiong. Hua Xiong also drew the sword of the overlord in his hand. Puff. As soon as he made contact, Guan Yu's sword in his hand was unexpectedly cut off by the rusty broken blade in Hua Xiong's hand. And if the broken blade does not diminish its power, then cut it onto Guan Yu's armor, breaking it open, and make a half-foot-long cut on Guan Yu's body. Blood came out in an instant. And at this moment, Guan Yu suddenly stopped fighting against Hua Xiong. Taking advantage of the opportunity, he grabbed his horse belly, jumped out of the battle circle, bent down, and charged straight towards his own camp without looking back. Compared to when I came over, 
the speed is much faster. Hua Xiong chuckled and paused for a moment before summoning his troops and following Guan Yu to cover up. The waist bow and arrow were not used either. The reason for this is not that Hua Xiong wants to keep Guan Yu alive. But it was because he had already remembered that according to the original work, Guan Yu had issued a military order to fight against Hua Xiong this time. A military order is not a child's play. Ma Su issued a military order, but as a result, Jieting was lost. Zhuge Liang shed tears and beheaded him. Guan Yu issued a military order, but Huarong Dao released Chao Chao. Lu Bei personally pleaded for mercy, and Zhuge Liang spared the blow. At this time, Lu Bei and Guan Yu had low status and did not have much face with Yuan Shao. Guan Yu had previously issued a military order to behead himself, but now he has returned in vain. Yuan Shao can't spare this blow. And Lu Guanzhang and the three of them became sworn brothers in Taoyuan, with a deep brotherly bond. They were afraid they wouldn't watch Guan Yu be beheaded. The conflict also emerged. Based on the strength of these three individuals, it was truly a sudden encounter among the feudal lords. Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, Chao Chao, Tao Qian and other feudal lords may suffer some casualties. At this time, a large army of feudal lords gathered, and once such a thing happened. It is impossible for the three of them to rush out with full force and shadow. It's hard to say that all three of them will be left behind. At this time, Guan Yu was just a horse archer and had never made a name for himself. I didn't have much credit for killing him on the battlefield. Why don't you let him go back and take a walk? Isn't it better for them to compete for a different identity among themselves? Such gains are greater and more cost-effective. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Yuan Shao Tie Guan Yu up and behead him in public you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Yuan Shao. Tai Guan Yu up and behead him in public. In Yuan Shao's tent, Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, Chao Chao, Gong Suanzan, Bao Xian, Lu Bei, Kong Rong, Tao Qian, and others are all here, waiting for the results to come. Many people sneer to themselves, although they don't say it. Their hearts are waiting for the red-faced and bearded horse archer to be killed by Hua Xiong. Although they belong to the same camp at this time, it does not prevent them from raising such thoughts. It's really that archer who is too boastful. A person of humble status, yet so proud, seems that besides him, everyone present here is useless. Especially Yuan Shu, Bao Xian, Han Fu, and others who recently suffered losses in the hands of Hua Xiong. Some generals who were lost in Hua Xiong's hands were even more resentful, waiting for the horse archer to be chopped to death by Hua Xiong. Their generals were all killed by Hua Xiong, and as a result, such a lowly person came out and said, slaying Hua Xiong is like taking things out of a bag. Who is this hitting in the face? Aren't you calling them useless? Chao Chao stood there without speaking. Although I also feel that this archer is somewhat unfamiliar with human relationships and worldly wisdom, I have a considerable expectation in my heart. I want to see this archer perform great deeds. On the one hand, this matter is related to the overall situation of the battle against Dong. On the other hand, I feel that I won't misread people. Although Guan Yu held a low position, Judging his appearance, words, and actions did not seem like a person without skills Lu Bei watched the reactions of everyone in the big tent and suppressed a slight sneer in his heart. But remembering the military order issued by Guan Yu, I couldn't help feeling a little uneasy in my heart. I couldn't help but look outside the big tent, wanting to see my second brother return victorious. Big brother, don't worry, I know my second brother's skills. There are few opponents in the world. Second brother always does things steadily and with confidence. Although Hua Xiong was brave and brave, he still couldn't meet his second brother. If my second brother says he wants to bring back Hua Xiong's head, he will definitely bring it back. There won't be any accidents Zhang Fei saw that Lu Bei seemed somewhat uneasy, so he lowered his voice to console him. Then he looked at the steaming bowl of wine and said, 
I think before that bowl of wine cools down, second brother will come back. Zhang Fei has a loud and loud voice. The word spoken to Lu Bei, although deliberately lowering his voice, still fell into the ears of many people. The sneer that made some people's hearts appear on their faces. Upon hearing Zhang Fei's words, Lu Bei nodded along, indicating that he knew. My second younger brother's martial arts skills are indeed extremely outstanding, almost invincible in the world. He is just a Hua Xiong and should not cause any trouble in his sewer. Lu Bei calmly glanced at the many high dot ranking figures in the big tent, and once again sneered in his heart. These people just want to see their second brother laugh. And wait to see my second brother return with Hua Xiong's head, these people's reactions. I'm afraid it will be quite exciting. My second younger brother can not only use his strength to block their mouths, but also make his brothers appear in front of others, so that these people no longer dare to underestimate me. After waiting for a moment longer, I could only hear people outside shouting and horses neighing, war drums ringing together, like the collapse of heaven and earth, the collapse of Mount Yu. Everyone showed a surprised expression. Only Lu Bei and Zhang Fei had a happy expression on their faces. This must be my second brother beheading that Hua Xiong. With joy in his heart, Zhang Fei let go of his high voice and said such words. Quickly gather information. Alliance leader Yuan Shao quickly spoke up to urge. Someone will immediately go out to inspect the account. As a result, before he could leave, the tent was suddenly opened and someone rushed in 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 a panic. I almost bumped into the person who went out. Not good. The general who just left has suffered a great defeat and returned. Hua Xiong took advantage of the situation to lead troops and horses, took advantage of the situation to cover up and come straight to the camp, like a fierce tiger the person who came in hurriedly saluted while speaking hurriedly, appearing very flustered. What? Zhang Fei's loud voice roared out in extreme surprise. By now, Lu Bei, who had been able to maintain his composure in the face of adversity, suddenly stood up and his expression changed instantly. How could this be possible? My second brother is almost invincible in the world, how can Hua Xiong harm my second brother? I said, you can't let a horse archer fight. What's going on now? Yuan Shu looked at Chao Chao and roared loudly. Execute the military law on this horse archer. Han Fu spoke in agreement. Chao Chao quickly spoke up and said, we'll talk about this later. The most important thing is to quickly stabilize the camp. After speaking, he didn't care too much and quickly headed outside. Many people in the tent couldn't sit still and headed out one after another. I just feel that Zhang Fei and Lu Bei, who were struck by lightning, were even more eager to leave before Chao Chao after a moment, only the bowl of still steaming wine remained in the big tent the Hua Xiong three-pointed two-edged sword has been hooked, and Xiang Yu in his hand has broken the blade and returned to his sheath. At this moment, he was holding a curved bow, constantly pulling his bow and firing arrows. Feather arrows flew into the camp of the Guangdong United Army, and people screamed and fell to the ground. And the 1500 Western Yang Iron Cavalry led behind him also imitated his style, galloping on horseback while constantly shooting arrows towards the Kanto Coalition Army. A continuous rain of arrows shrouded the lives of the Guangdong United Army soldiers. Hold on. Don't panic. These Liangzhou soldiers dare not really attack the camp. Yuan Shao shouted loudly to boost morale, click. The long bow in Hua Xiong's hand was broken. This bow is also a strong bow that most people cannot use, but it was still pulled and broken by him. He still felt that he was holding back his strength and didn't dare to really put in a lot of effort. He threw away his broken bow, grabbed a three-pointed, two-edged sword in his hand, and rode straight towards Yuan Shaoying village. Behind them, the Iron Cavalry of the Western Liang followed one after another, like wild beasts in the wilderness and an unbeatable torrent. Yuan Shao, who had just shouted out that sentence, instantly changed his expression and stood there speechless. Hua Xiong rode his horse and rushed straight to the place where Yuan Shaoying was located. 
Less than thirty steps later, he suddenly pulled up the reins, turned the horse's head, and circled back in a circle. Behind them, the cavalry of the Western Liang followed and fired arrows at Yuan Shaoying's camp at such close range. Ha ha ha. People from Kanto, but that's all. Surprisingly, a small horse archer was sent to confront. Hua Xiong burst out laughing heartily, recklessly, and recklessly. In the rumbling sound of horse hooves, he led the iron cavalry of Liangzhou, resembling a tiger or a wolf, and rode back on horseback. Who? In Yuan Xiaoying's camp, the various lords who came out breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that Hua Xiong did not forcefully charge towards the camp. Some people even make a sound directly. Yuan Shao also felt that his breathing had become smoother again. This Hua Xiong is so arrogant. Are you really bullying nobody here? Chao Chao looked at the soldiers and horses of Hua Xiong's subordinates who had galloped back amidst the smoke and dust, and then looked at the many people who were so shocked by Hua Xiong's behavior that they couldn't speak. He said angrily. Now prepare to lead your own troops and horses to chase after. Chao Chao, at the beginning, also had courage and determination. But was stopped by Yuan Shao. Meng De, let him leave. Hua Xiong is full of tricks and will set up an ambush if he can't say it. I see his recent actions as more like luring the enemy. And today we have suffered consecutive defeats, our morale has been taken away by the enemy, and our military morale is unstable. Yuan Shao's words fell into place, and Han Fu, Wang Kuang, and others nodded in agreement. After calming Chao Chao, Yuan Shao looked at Guan Yu, who was covered in blood, and shouted loudly, Tie up Guan Yu, the horse archer, and behead him in public. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Guan Yunchang goes to death with a single blade. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Guan Yunchang goes to death with a single blade, tie the horse archer Guan Yu to me and behead him in public. Yuan Shao's voice fell, and before Yuan Shao's personal soldiers could take action, Yuan Shu had already drawn his sword from his waist and commanded his personal soldiers to bind Guan Yu. He has always been dissatisfied with Yuan Shao's position as the leader of the alliance, and he doesn't take Yuan Shao's orders very seriously. At this moment, he is more proactive than ever before. Most of the others present turned their gaze towards Guan Yu, appearing unfriendly. At this moment, it seemed as if the coalition forces were stuck at Siswi Pass, unable to move forward at any pace, and unable to lift their heads under the pressure of Hua Xiong, all due to this small horse archer's insistence on going to battle. Wait a minute. Lu Bei quickly shouted and stood in front of Guan Yu. Zhang Fei also stared at the circular ring eyes, with his tiger whiskers upside down. He held the Zhangba snake spear in his hand, blocking the other side of Guan Yu. Who dares to kill my second brother? He roared loudly, his voice like the roar of a tiger. Regardless of whether it is in the alliance of feudal lords at this time, and whether it is the Yuan family of the four generations and three princes on the opposite side. Being obstructed by Lu Bei and Zhang Fei, Yuan Shu felt extremely unhappy in his heart and wanted to take them down together with the horse archer. However, seeing the white man with a crazy tiger-like appearance, for some reason, these words were never spoken. As I said before, we won't let a single archer fight, so as not to damage our military's prestige. But this horse archer, who insists on going to battle, has even issued a military order. As soon as I met Hua Xiong, I was beaten up and rushed back in embarrassment. How? I used to be so arrogant, but now I'm starting to hide behind others and dare not speak up to you. Zhang Fei stared and was about to continue attacking Yuan Shu, but someone reached out and grabbed him. But Guan Yu took a step forward. He held Lu Bei with one hand and Zhang Fei with the other. Big brother, third brother. That Hua Xiong is truly unparalleled in bravery. I think he is stronger than the top general under Dong Zhuo, LV Bu. I miscalculated, not an opponent. I fought my life to escape, not because I was afraid of death, 
nor because I wanted my older brother and younger brother to protect my life. I just want to inform my older brother and younger brother of this news, so that you can be very careful when encountering Hua Xiong in the future. I also want to see my older brother and younger brother again and say a few words after speaking, he knelt down directly at Lu Bei's knee. He suffered a serious injury on his body, and during his actions, the wound was involved, which should be very painful. But his face remained unchanged, as if he had never felt it before. Lu Bei quickly went to help him, but Guan Yu refused. He kowtowed respectfully to Lu Bei three times, and then kowtowed to Zhang Fei. Just now, Zhang Fei, who was like a crazy tiger, quickly knelt down in panic and kowtowed to Guan Yu. Big brother, third brother, Yun Chang can't be by your side anymore. Third brother, you should keep your useful body and protect your elder brother in the future. I'm not here anymore, you're the only one left to protect big brother. You must not have anything to do. Big brother, after I die, bury my body in the peach blossom forest of San Di Zhuang after speaking, Guan Yu stood up, while Lu Bei was already in tears. Second brother, you don't have to do this. I only live for second brother, don't die for Yun Chang. Zhang Fei stared at Huan Yan and said, I'm the same. Guan Yu shook his head and said, Big brother, Yun Chang can't listen to you this time. Lu Bei just didn't let Guan Yu leave, and Zhang Fei didn't let either. They knew that Guan Yu had gone desperately to find Hua Xiong after coming back to meet them. But at this moment, there is no doubt about risking one's life. Guan Yu directly drew the broken sword and placed it horizontally on his neck. Big brother, don't stop me, third brother, otherwise I will die here feeling helpless. Even if you knock me unconscious, I'll wake up dead Zhang Fei's arms, which were gathering strength in the dark, drooped in a dejected state Guan Yu demanded a big knife and a sword, and turned over to mount his horse. Guan is not someone who is greedy for life and afraid of death, so let's fight to the death with that Hua Xiong. Don't bother you to do it. Guan Yu squinted his phoenix eyes and scanned Yuan Xiao and Yuan Shu before speaking out. Although his whole body was covered in blood, he was still full of pride. Hua Xiong's bravery may not be weaker than Dong Zhuo's first fierce general LV Bu. In the future, we need to use more tactics to capture him. He added a sentence. Oh. I would actually put gold on my face. I can't beat Hua Xiong anymore, just say that Hua Xiong is even more powerful than LV Bu, Yuan Shu said disdainfully. Guan Yu was too lazy to argue with him. He just reminded him, for the sake of being an ally, that whether to listen or not had nothing to do with him. He turned around on horseback and headed towards the camp gate. Stop. Are you trying to use an excuse to escape? Take it down and kill the regular army. Yuan Shu shouted out loud. Chao Chao quickly spoke up to stop, Highway, don't get angry for now. Since he wants to go all out, let him go. If we can kill one more Western young soldier, it's better to kill one more than to die in our hands. I believe this person won't escape. When Gong Suanzan saw Chao Chao speaking, he didn't speak, just stood there, silently staring at Yuan Shu. As an illegitimate son born to a maid, he naturally harbors some displeasure towards legitimate sons like Yuan Shu. Even if Yuan Shu is the legitimate son of the Yuan family, it is the same. Moreover, Guan Yu is also the sworn brother of Xuanda's younger brother. He issued a military order, and if he wanted to pray for survival after his defeat, Gong Sun Zan would naturally not speak up. But if you come back and say goodbye to brother Xuanda, and then go to the battlefield to die, if others don't agree, he will definitely stop you. I hope Mengda didn't take your eyes off me. Yuan Shu remained silent for a moment and said, then inserted the sword back into its sheath. Big brother, no one is allowed to follow me. If anyone follows me, I will die on the spot. After Guan Yu finished speaking, he immediately rode his horse and left the camp, quickly heading towards Siswi Pass. From time to time, some blood drips down and hits the ground, splashing out blood flowers Lu Bei and Zhang Fei, who had already put their feet on the stirrups and wanted to follow Guan Yu, froze in their movements. 
I had to stand here and watch Guan Yu go. Watching a single horse, following the lingering smoke and dust, heading toward Sisui Pass, Liu Bei couldn't help but shed tears as Guan Yu's figure gradually blurred. Zhang Fei's eyes were bright red many people who had previously been extremely disgusted and disliked Guan Yu have now developed many different feelings. In the camp, there was a moment of silence, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Yun Chang, are you safe and sound? You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 6 Yun Chang, are you safe and sound? The bandits of Xiliang should not leave. Guan Yun Chang is here. Who dares to fight me? Guan Yu rode his horse and chased after him, with occasional drops of blood falling along the way. His red face had already turned a bit pale. But the expression on his face remained unchanged, still holding a knife in one hand and a reins in the other, squinting his phoenix eyes and chasing ahead. Seeing that he had caught up, he shouted and fiercely pinched his warhorse, charging towards the Western Liang army at a faster speed. Xiliang Iron Cavalry, who had previously charged for a while, has now returned and slowed down its horse speed. After the army, there were some backward sentinels and cavalry. Seeing Guan Yu coming alone and hearing his shout, two people who were closer to him charged towards him with oblique spikes, intending to kill this madman. Guan Yu was fearless, as if he had not seen these two sentinels, still charging towards the front army with his horses. In the blink of an eye, two sentry riders had already approached Guan Yu one by one, pointing their guns at him and stabbing him. With a movement of his arms, Guan Yu had already swung the big knife in half a circle. Although it's not the familiar Qinglong blade, it still chops two sentries off the horse. But Guan Yu didn't even look at these two people, and his horse rushed straight towards the Western Liang army ahead without slowing down. The next moment, it's already rushing into the crowd. Although feeling the loss of strength, dizziness, and pain in multiple parts of the body. And the whole thing looked like a bloody person, but he still squinted his phoenix eyes slightly, invigorated himself, waved his big sword, and stirred up a wave of blood. Like a fierce tiger entering a flock of sheep. In an instant, eight people had already been executed in a row. Bang! As Guan Yu was about to strike a western young cavalry with a large sword in his hand, a three-pointed, two-edged sword suddenly appeared and fiercely lifted it up from bottom to top, blocking it. As soon as they made contact, this incredibly powerful blood-stained sword was immediately knocked away. The burly Hua Xiong, riding a warhorse, appeared here. Watching Guan Yu, who was riding alone and rushing towards him like a blood man, Hua Xiong was somewhat surprised. Originally, he was able to slay Guan Yu with all his might before. The reason for keeping his life and chasing him back to the camp all the way was mainly because he remembered when Guan Yu Wenjiu beheaded Hua Xiong, who had issued a military order. If we retreat from this defeat, we will inevitably be subjected to military law enforcement. And Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, and others were there, naturally not watching Guan Yu be beheaded. At that time, there would inevitably be a commotion due to Guan Yu. Among the feudal lords such as Yuan Shao, it is highly likely that some of them will die. It is highly likely that Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, and others will die as a result. The already divided Kanto coalition will become even more chaotic as a result he thought so much, but never expected that Guan Yu would eventually catch up with him on a single horse and launch a death charge. Although I was surprised in my heart, at this moment, something suddenly came to my mind. This is Guan Yu, Guan Yun Chang. He has his pride in himself. Watching Guan Yu, who was clearly in a bad state after being knocked off by himself, still pulled out his sword from his waist and prepared to continue the battle, Hua Xiong's eyes showed a look of appreciation. Hand out the three-pointed, two-edged knife in your hand. Puff. The sharp three-pointed two-edged knife directly pierced Guan Yu's neck. The blade passes, the head falls, and the beautiful beard floats. On top of the corpse, there was not much blood gushing out. The headless body of Guan Yu paused on the horse's back for a moment before falling off the horse. Until death, the long sword in his hand never fell, still tightly clenched in his hand. 
There was a personal soldier nearby who wanted to lift Guan Yu's head with a gun and hand it over to Hua Xiong, but was stopped by Hua Xiong. Hua Xiong jumped off the warhorse and lifted Guan Yu's head. However, Guan Yu's expression remained unchanged, and his narrow Dan Fang's eyes revealed a chilling sense of war. Yun Chang, are you safe and sound? Hua Xiong looked at Guan Yu and spoke out. After waiting earnestly for a moment, there was no movement at all. Guan Yu did not speak, nor did his eyes turn. Hua Xiong then leaned Guan Yu's head and neck together, helped him tidy up many broken beautiful beards, and led troops away from here Guan Yu suffered such losses in his own hands, which made Hua Xiong feel somewhat emotional. After all, Guan Yu is too famous. If he encounters Guan Yu before he meets Liu Bei, Hua Xiong will make friends and win him over no matter what. But at this time, Guan Yu had already formed a sworn alliance with Liu Bei, and both sides were destined to be enemies. If there was a chance, it must not be missed. Because at this point, there is simply no way to collect Guan Yu for use. Hua Xiong left with the Xiliang Iron Cavalry, while Guan Yu lay on the ground, squinting his phoenix eyes at the sky, Commander, these soldiers and horses in the Kanto region have low combat power, but they are rich and fluid. Such an unknown general uses a sword made of wrought iron. On the way back, a cavalry general came to Hua Xiong's side, holding the 82-pound green dragon sword in both hands, and said to Hua Xiong. It seems a bit difficult. Hua Xiong took it and looked at it in his hand. He danced a few times and felt that the weight was still slightly lighter. There are not many people who are world.renowned from birth. This sword-wielding Guan Yu was supposed to make a name for himself in this battle, but he met me. Thinking about the scene not long ago, when Guan Yu, who had been seriously injured and had not had much blood flowing after death, was in a state like a blood gourd, still killing people on his side like chopping melons and vegetables, the general nodded in agreement. Fortunately, you have the governor here. He said with some lingering fear in his heart on the tall wall of Siswi Pass, Li Su stood here with his troops and horses, appearing somewhat uneasy. General Zhonglang, there is no need to worry. The Huadu governor is a fierce general in the Western Liang dynasty, and the group of bandits in the Kanto region is bound to be helpless. Zhao Tsen spoke out in relief. Li Su nodded and said, the governor of Huadu is brave and skilled in battle. It's because I was too worried. Then he continued to look towards the distance. Not long after, I saw the Western Young Cavalry returning from afar from the battle. The formation was not too neat, but it was not scattered. There were no pursuers behind, and it didn't seem like they had suffered a defeat. Then his gaze fell on the fluttering Chinese character flag, and Li Su couldn't help but let out a thud in his heart. Looking from afar at Hua Xiong, who was sitting on a horse under the big flag and still appeared burly with a towering figure, he was even more unbelievable and his emotions were extremely complex. Governor Huadu is bound to win the battle and come back. We'll open the door quickly to welcome him. Zhao Tsen exclaimed joyfully. Upon hearing this, Li Su also smiled and said, Yes, yes, quickly open the door and go meet the governor of Huadu. After speaking, he took a small step down the wall and personally opened the door of Siswi Pass. He was the first to leave and welcome Hua Xiong. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Let the bullet fly for a while. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Let the bullet fly for a while, congratulations to the victorious return of the governor. Li Su looked at Hua Xiong and bowed respectfully just like before. At the same time, he is also secretly observing Hua Xiong. Hua Xiong was also secretly watching Li Su at this moment. He is no longer the rough and powerful Hua Xiong he used to be, and he also knows that his predecessor died from poisoning on a horse, and it is highly likely that he was lost in the hands of Li Su. At this moment, I secretly watched, but also noticed some clues. Li Su stopped talking about these things and seemed to be on par with before. However, it can be seen from some subtle aspects that he is unnatural. Especially when he first saw himself. 
If we follow the temperament of our predecessors, after realizing these things, we would definitely curse at Li Su and question him why he wanted to harm us. At this moment, we would directly strike and chop Li Su down. But at this time, Hua Xiong would not do so. Directly chopping Li Su would be enjoyable, but it would bring a series of troubles. Li Su's position here with Dong Zhuo is not too low, and he is the general of the Tiger Benzhong. And they are fellow villagers of Lu Bu, all from Bingzhou and have a close relationship. People from the Bingzhou clique, especially LV Bu, were brought over by Dong Zhuo who also gave BMW and gold and silver. After surrendering with Ding Yuan's head in hand, Lu Bu was directly in theft as a marquee by Dong Zhuo. This shows Dong Zhuo's emphasis. At this time, the strong army in the world was the border armies of Liangzhou, Bingzhou, and Yuzhou. In addition, there were Danyang soldiers and the Changsha army led by Sun Jian. Dong Zhuo values the troops and horses of Bingzhou very much and wants to completely control them. And Hua Xiong is the old hand of Xiliang. There is already some discord between the Xiliang clique and the newly formed Bingzhou clique. At this time, the decisive and decisive public killing of Li Su, a military officer on the side of Bingzhou, will inevitably face resistance from officials and generals of the Bingzhou faction. It will undermine Dong Zhuo's plan to gather troops from Bingzhou. In this situation, although Hua Xiong is an old man under Dong Zhuo's command, he will inevitably be punished and his life will not be too easy. Of course, the most important thing is that there is no way to prove that Li Su poisoned himself. If it can be proven that Li Su poisoned himself, it would be that he was publicly executed, and the problem would not be too serious. Dong Zhuo wants to gather the people from Bingzhou, but the Liangzhou clique also needs it and cannot let the hearts of the clique cold. But the difficulty lies here. Hua Xiong has no way to prove that Li Su poisoned himself. After all, he is now bouncing around with the body of his predecessor. Up and down, there is an inexhaustible amount of strength. No one believes that Li Su poisoned himself. Dealing with Li Su's matter, we cannot be reckless. We need to wait for the opportunity and let the bullets fly for a while. What kind of welcome? Hua Xiong spoke out. I almost didn't come back today. Upon hearing this, Li Su's heart moved and he repeatedly asked, What's wrong? But the governor has encountered a difficult bandit. What extraordinary characters have appeared at the Kanto bandits place Hua Xiong pouted disdainfully and said, The bandits in the Kanto region are as fragile as local chickens, tiles, and dogs. What kind of threat can they pose? After killing Pan Fong today, suddenly, my stomach hurt so much that it was about to kill me. Fortunately, there were no thieves coming at that time, otherwise, it's highly likely that they wouldn't have come back. It's like being poisoned. Upon hearing these words, Li Su's heart suddenly throbbed violently. What's going on? Did you use the wrong force and have a fork in your breath? Still sick. Please ask the doctor to take a look as soon as possible. The commander dot in dot chief is a fierce general who holds important positions and must not be careless he looked up at Hua Xiong and said with concern. Hua Xiong withdrew his gaze and said, it's okay, there's no need to look at the doctor. It suddenly hurt for a while, and then it healed. I don't think it's a big deal. Li Su breathed a deep sigh of relief to himself. Just now, his heart was about to jump out, and he vaguely felt as if he had been seen through by Hua Xiong. But at this point, it seems that Hua Xiong is no different from before. Moreover, according to Hua Xiong's reckless personality, if he really suspects that he has poisoned him, then this is definitely not the case. He is already wielding a knife and chopping himself. This is a barbarian who can't hide anything in his heart. I don't need to look up at him here. And this barbarian has a lot of trust in himself, no matter what, he would never think that he would prescribe medicine for him these thoughts flashed rapidly in his heart, and Li Su immediately stopped thinking too much about this matter. Unconsciously, his whole body became particularly natural. Hua Xiong seemed unintentional, but he saw all of this in his eyes and sneered inwardly. 
After saying a few words to Zhao Tsun who came out, they returned to the Siswi Pass together in the camp, Li Su and Zhao Tsun congratulated Hua Xiong on once again achieving great success. Hua Xiong smiled and said, what kind of credit is this? It's just a fight against a weak local chicken, tile dog. In the eyes of the governor, these people are nothing, but they are all real military achievements. Zhao Tsun smiled and complimented. There is also some credit from you here. Hua Xiong smiled and said. Upon hearing these words, both of them couldn't help but feel delighted and quickly expressed their gratitude. Li Su pondered for a moment and said, Commander, those soldiers and horses in the Kanto region have been repeatedly defeated by the commander, and they are already in awe. I would never have thought that under the repeated victories of the governor, troops would still be sent. If the commander leads troops to rob the camp tonight, he will definitely be able to deal a fierce blow to the bandits in the Kanto region. The commander Dadin Dot chief is already a trusted general of the prime minister, and he has made many contributions in this battle. He may not be able to open a mansion and build a yamen like the generals Nyo Zhonglang and Dong Zhonglang the words were sincere and had an unparalleled allure. But Li Su's heart was filled with sneers. At this point, he already knew what was happening on the battlefield. I took the medicine before, but the dosage was a bit small and the duration of the effect was too short. It wasn't long before Hua Xiong regained his strength. If the medicinal effect continues for a longer time, according to the combat power of the red-faced and bearded man who came out of the Kanto coalition, Hua Xiong will definitely be gone. What Li Su didn't know was that the amount of medicine he prescribed was not only not small, but also excessive. He originally intended to poison Hua Xiong to the point where his combat effectiveness severely declined on the battlefield, and then let the Kanto United Army kill him, directly poisoning the real Hua Xiong today, Hua Xiong said something, as if he had been poisoned, which made him feel a little frightened. Although he knew that Hua Xiong was just casually speaking and did not doubt himself, in the short term, Li Su dared not continue to prescribe medicine. But it can constantly motivate Hua Xiong to fight against the Kanto coalition. Although Hua Xiong is brave and fierce, there will always be times of loss in such continuous battles. As long as Hua Xiong dies, the position of commander of Siswi Pass will inevitably fall into his own hands. Based on his understanding of Hua Xiong, this barbarian would gladly agree to his proposal. And I am extremely grateful for my praise. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Reverse Fraud You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Reverse Fraud What You Said Is True I have repeatedly charged and killed the troops in the Kanto region, and I have already lost my courage. I would never have thought that I would be so bold. After defeating them one after another, if you dare to rob the camp tonight, you will definitely not be prepared. If we rob the camp this time, we will definitely win. Hua Xiong spoke out with a smile on his face, appearing cheerful. Upon hearing these words, Li Su felt a sense of joy in his heart. As expected, it didn't happen to me. Being told by oneself, this barbarian is indeed going to continue robbing the camp. Just as I was about to offer a compliment, I heard Hua Xiong's voice continue to ring. However, for some reason today, since my abdominal pain, my body has not been very refreshed and I feel a bit tired. It is no longer suitable to lead troops to do this. But this once.in.a. lifetime fighter jet is fleeting and cannot be missed. General Li Zhonglang, you will quietly lead the troops out of the pass tonight and go do this. Li Su, who had originally thought of praising Hua Xiong, was immediately stunned on the spot. What is the situation? After working on it for a while, how did this happen to me? Commander, this. I'm afraid the last general may not have enough talent and may have wasted his troops and horses. Li Su quickly spoke out and pushed back. Hua Xiong said, your ability to lead troops in battle is really not enough if you confront some strong armies. But it's definitely not a problem to attack some of the already beaten and cowardly Kanto coalition forces, and still rob the camp. This is a divine opportunity, thanks to bringing it to your doorstep. 
If this battle is fought beautifully, it is not impossible for the Prime Minister to grant you the title of Marquis. Hua Xiong looked at Li Su and fooled him. Li Su is calculating him, and he is also calculating Li Su. Li Su would choose to take action against his predecessor, and Hua Xiong has already pondered it. I think the biggest reason is that Hua Xiong blocked Li Su's way. Zhao Tsun was originally the defending general of Sisui Pass. After the uprising of the Kanto United Army, many people volunteered to fight, including LV Bu, Hua Xiong, Li Su, and others. Finally, it was determined that Hua Xiong would be the main force, with Li Su and Hu Zhen as assistants, to support Sisui Pass. After arriving here, Hua Xiong won consecutive victories, and Li Su, who had previously wanted to be the main general, naturally felt unhappy in his heart. Moreover, he, who has come from later generations, also knows that Li Su is an official fan who likes to climb up. You can say that LV Bu rebelled against Ding Yuan and defected to Dong Zhua in order to climb higher here. It is also possible to join forces with LV Bu and others to kill Dong Zhua because they have not been promoted for a long time. In this situation, Li Su would choose to take a black hand on his predecessor, and it's not a problem for him to Yin Dai Hua Xiong. Hu Zhen who came with him is dead, and Hua Xiong is dead again. It's Li Su who counts here at the Sisui Pass. As for whether Lu Bu and other people from the Bingzhou clique were involved later on, Hua Xiong couldn't guess. Maybe there is, maybe not. However, this did not prevent him from using his titles to deceive Li Su into leading troops out to rob the camp. As long as Li Su is tricked out of the camp by the backhand, it will be easy to eliminate those who want to take advantage of him at this moment. Upon hearing Hua Xiong's words of being granted a title for meritorious service, Li Su couldn't help but feel a heartbeat. I said that LV Bu rebelled against Ding Yuan and made great contributions, only receiving some financial rewards, without promotion or title. If we can make great contributions on the battlefield this time, with the foundation of our previous achievements, it is not impossible for the Prime Minister to appoint himself as a Marquis here, just. Li Su pondered for a moment before hesitating to speak. Where are these motherly women? Hua Xiong spoke with an unhappy expression. I will lead troops out of the pass and raid the formation with you from behind. Although my body is not comfortable, I can still compete with you in battle. So, listen to the governor's words. Li Su had a rare moment of arrogance. Then, with some joy, he ordered troops to go. I didn't even realize that he was trying to trick Hua Xiong into robbing the camp, but ended up doing it himself outside the Sisui Pass, it is more than ten miles away. In Gong Sun Zan's camp, Lu Bei and Zhang Fei, dressed in plain clothes, knelt down and wept bitterly. In front of them, there was a coffin with Guan Yu's body parked. Guan Yu's head had already been sewn with needle and thread, so it could be considered as leaving a complete corpse. Hua Xiong, I, Lu Bei, will surely slay you. Sacrifice my second brother's spirit with your head. Lu Bei clenched his fists in both hands and squeezed out this sentence from between his teeth, with a chilly feeling, like a lone wolf roaring. Today, I lost my second younger brother in pain, just like a sharp knife gouging out my heart and separating my bones and flesh. Heartbreaking. On the side, Zhang Fei's eyes were red, almost bleeding, and he said, me too. He roared loudly, as if wounded by a crazy tiger. Under the cover of night, within the camp of Gong Sun Zan, Lu Bei's large tent was lit with bean-like lights, and a soul-summoning banner was erected at the entrance of the tent. Lu Bei and Zhang Fei, dressed in armor. Double-edged swords and Zhangba snake spears are both placed in convenient positions. Both here guarding Guan Yu and waiting for troops to come out and rob the camp at Sisui Pass. It would be best if Hua Xiong personally came out to rob the camp. So, deep hatred in the sea of blood, avenged overnight. In the Baoxin camp, seven or eight miles away from Gong Sun Zan's camp, the Prime Minister of Jibei, Baoxin, is deploying troops and ambushes here to prevent the looting of the camp at Sisui Pass. Lord, the bandits have been fighting repeatedly, and their soldiers and horses are exhausted. 
how dare you come to rob the camp tonight? The deputy general on the side couldn't help but speak up and inquire. This deputy general is a native of Mount Taishan County and a fellow townsman of Bao Exian. Surnames and surnames are prohibited in writing. When he was fighting against Huang Zhan, he was recruited by Bao Exian and later recruited troops with Bao Exian to come and fight against Dong Zhuo. It is a person like Bao Exian's right arm. However, at this time, Eugene was not one of the later five good generals. Being brave in battle returns to being brave, but for strategic planning, it is still immature. Bao Chandao said, it's highly likely that you will come. The troops of Xiliang were originally a strong and arrogant army, but now they have successively defeated us, so they will not regard us seriously. It is a time of arrogance. Today, Hua Xiong, although only bluffing and attacking Yuan Xiaoying's camp, can be seen that he already had the idea of breaking through our military camp. However, our army was prepared during the day and it was difficult to take action, so he returned Hua Xiong tasted the sweetness, and according to this person's arrogant approach, he was afraid that he would come tonight and want to work hard to defeat us all. Upon hearing this, Eugene nodded, indicating understanding that he had gone to ambush with all his heart and effort. After Eugene left, the Prime Minister of Jibei, Bao Exian, fiercely punched the table and table. Lu Bei lost his second younger brother in pain, so why didn't he lose his second younger brother in pain? His younger brother Bao Zhong was also beheaded by Hua Xiong. Hua Xiong has long been regarded as a must-kill person. Not to mention, Hua Xiong led troops to guard Sisui Pass, blocking their westward advance to kill Dong Zhua and rescue the emperor. Tonight, as long as Hua Xiong dares to come out, he will definitely have no return. Invisibly, the Avengers have already appeared here in the Kanto United Army as the night passed by the third and almost the fourth, the door of Sisui Pass quietly opened. Li Su took the lead and walked out from inside, end of this chapter. Chapter 9 Night Attack You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Night Attack The bright moon in the sky has long disappeared without a trace. The night sky is deep, studded with stars, enveloping the fields. However, these stars in the sky do not bring light to the earth, but instead make it even darker. At almost four o'clock, the night was getting dark and the surroundings were quiet. In the chilly season of spring, there is not even a sound of insects chirping. The weather is very stable without any wind. Even if there is no wind, Walking outside this pass makes one feel cold all over. Li Su led his horse and pulled a corner of the front guard armor, walking forward with some depth and depth. The hooves of the horse were all wrapped in cloth, and the horse's mouth was also controlled, making no sound. The soldiers, with a stone in their midst, marched silently towards the front. Li Su felt somewhat uneasy in his heart. However, this nervousness disappeared after thinking of being promoted and granted titles. Looking back on this period of time, the Guangdong United Army encountered Hua Xiong and suffered consecutive defeats, making it difficult for them to lift their heads when they were led by Hua Xiong. Their hearts were filled with anxiety, and there was nothing left. When it comes to charging formations, I am not as good as the barbarians, but I have also been experienced in battle and my skills are not bad. And the 2,000 troops he led were mostly elite soldiers from Bingzhou. The Kanto coalition has already proven with its strength that these allied forces are useless. Hua Xiong was able to beat them so hard that he couldn't lift his head, and he himself was also able to beat them to pieces. When it comes to leading troops, Hua Xiong, a barbarian, is not as good as himself. And tonight, there is also the barbarian from Hua Xiong who followed suit and plundered the formation with him. Hua Xiong, this barbarian, has a certain amount of courage. Even though his body has some discomfort, when it comes to time, he can really fight his life to save himself. Li Su had no doubt that the barbarians would help him raid the formation. Hua Manzi is just a crude warrior, he can move his fists much faster than his brain. Moreover, he trusts himself very much and has no idea what his true thoughts are about him, let alone how he has dealt with him. 
In terms of playfulness, he is much worse than himself. Playing him to death himself, he doesn't even know how he died, but instead will continue to be grateful to himself until he dies. This kind of person is the easiest to deal with. In this battle, if he really encounters danger, he will definitely fight to the death to save himself. However, such incidents of distress are unlikely to occur. After discussing and analyzing with the barbarians today, it can be concluded that at this time, the troops in the Kanto region are basically not on guard. And at this moment, I am still preparing to launch an attack on those Kanto allied forces when the sky is about to break. Those Guangdong allied forces, even if they have certain defenses, will basically relax at that time. They will definitely want to avoid their own side and choose to attack the camp at this time. As soon as Li Su thought about the later discussion, Hua Xiong wanted to personally lead troops to rob the camp, but because he had drugged him, his body was not feeling well and he couldn't do it. He could only feel the discomfort of giving himself this once in a lifetime opportunity, which was full of frustration. Li Su felt particularly happy and proud in his heart. It's very comfortable. His goal this time is the camp of Baoxin, the prime minister of Jibei. Yuan Shao's camp was too large and sturdy, serving as the location of the allied leader with a large number of soldiers. He dare not touch. Sun Jian's troops and horses are too far from here, only a few dozen miles away. The army led by Gong Sun Zan was the border army of Yuzhou, and the white horse Itzong he led was also elite. Moreover, Gong Sun Zan himself was also a renowned figure in western Liaoning, and he was equally afraid to touch him. As for Kong Rong, Xiao Mao, and others, the camp was set too far back, and he dared not go there. He also felt that these people were too watery and fighting was meaningless. So after some selection, I chose the camp of Bao Xin, the prime minister of Jibei. Bao Xian had previously worn a yellow scarf and was a well-known military leader. But I was defeated by Hua Xiong once again, which belongs to the kind with some strength but some vegetables. At this moment, when we went to attack the camp and saw Bao Xian's soldiers and horses with the prestige of the Western Liang army, we were bound to panic. The camp is also located at the front, making it the most suitable for fighting recalling the various arrangements and choices he had made, Li Su couldn't help but straighten his chest. I am full of anticipation for what will happen next. Tonight, it must be the time for me to become famous all over the world. After I leave, close the door tightly and don't let anything go wrong. Hua Xiong looked at Zhao Tsen and explained. Zhao Tsen quickly arched his hand and said, Here. Hua Xiong saw that Li Su had already led his troops and horses out of the Siswi Pass, so he also held a three-pointed and two-edged sword, carrying 1500 Western Liang Iron Cavalry, and took advantage of the night to leave the Siswi Pass. After weighing with his hands, Hua Xiong felt somewhat dissatisfied with the three-pointed, two-edged knife weighing over 30 pounds. In the past, the predecessor felt that the weight was just right but at this moment, Hua Xiong held it in his hand and felt light and ethereal, like an embroidery needle. When the matter comes to an end, it is necessary to find a new weapon that is suitable for oneself. Melt Guan use Qing Long blade and add a few tens of pounds of wrought iron to create a brand new three-pointed, two-edged sword that may be easy to use. He thought so. The night was cold and silent, and the troops and horses marched silently. Hua Xiong led his troops and did not keep moving forward with Li Su. After walking forward for a while, he led his troops and horses to the side. Hua Xiong has led troops several times to criss-cross the Siswi Pass, and is particularly familiar with the terrain outside after a journey, Li Su and his group of horses arrived at the camp of Baoxin, the prime minister of Jibei. Time is about five or more. At this time, the sky is cold, the days are short and the nights are long. It's late at dawn, and the fifth shift is the perfect time to sleep. Li Su looked at the Bao Xian camp, where there were only three or two flames, and the hole was silent. At this moment, I'm afraid the soldiers are sleeping soundly. I never expected to come and rob the camp at this moment. 
As agreed, the cavalry began to mount their horses. Li Su and his subordinate General Li Wan, each leading a thousand people, acted separately and launched a surprise attack on Bao Exian's camp, one on the left and one on the right. Zheng. Zheng. The sound of bows and arrows rang out. On Li Su's side, soldiers and horses shot arrows and killed the sentinels. They quickly opened the camp gate and rushed in. Li Su also rode his horse and wielded his sword to charge in. At the moment of stepping into Baoxin camp, I felt my whole body boiling with passion. But the next moment, as soon as his blood boiled, it suddenly cooled down. Because, surprisingly, there is no one in this Baoxin camp, it is an empty camp. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Hua Xiong Save Me You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Hua Xiong Save Me the completely unexpected situation made Li Su instantly shiver all over. All the emotions in my heart have now converged into three words. I was tricked. Bao Xian, surprisingly, was already prepared here. Back out. Quickly retreat. He roared loudly, his voice appearing dry. At the same time, he quickly turned the horse's head and ran towards the outside. But at this moment, the troops from behind are rapidly approaching the Baoxin camp, and it is not easy to retreat. The troops retreating from the front collided with those advancing from the rear, creating a neat and orderly formation that immediately became chaotic. Before the ambush appeared, the troops led by Li Su were already in chaos. Zheng. 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 The sound of countless trembling bowstrings suddenly rang out. In the darkness, a large number of sharp arrows fell from the sky to the ground, causing a sudden scream. Subsequently, prepared troops rushed out and rushed towards Li Su's troops. Li Su's souls are all rising. At this moment, he was completely disorganized and didn't want to kill enemies, make achievements, or be promoted or granted titles anymore. I just want to quickly escape from here, find Hua Xiong, and save my life. Eugene, holding a long spear in his hand, charged towards the enemy with his troops and horses. He was already a brave general, and at this moment, Bao Exian was also well versed in his predictions, boosting his military morale. For a moment, with divine assistance, a long spear danced like the wind, and in an instant, for soldiers from Bingzhou were lifted off their horses on the other side, Li Wan, who was robbing the camp with his troops and horses, also discovered an empty camp and encountered an ambush. However, the choices he made at this time were completely different from those of Li Su. Follow me to charge. He gritted his teeth and roared loudly, leading his troops and horses to continue charging forward. Prepare to break through the ambush troops in Baoxin camp ahead, merge with Li Su who is attacking from the other side of the camp, and continue to charge outward. At this point, it is absolutely impossible to retreat with troops and horses. If you retreat, it will only cause chaos among your own troops and horses. Once the troops are in chaos, it will be too difficult to leave. He felt that Li Su also knew this truth and would make the same choice as himself. As long as both sides work together, even if they are ambushed, with the elite troops and horses led by Bingzhou, they can still kill the ambushed troops and escape without losing too many troops and horses. After all, these Kanto allied forces have experienced too few battles and their combat effectiveness is inadequate. Previously being suppressed and beaten by Hua Xiong's troops is the best witness. As a result, it wasn't until he made a strong charge that he realized that General Li Su, who was always talking to him about military tactics and tactics, had made the most deadly and foolish choice at this moment. Li Wan was stunned for a moment. After cursing a fool in secret, he gritted his teeth and continued to charge forward with his troops and horses Eugene led his troops and horses, killing them vigorously and constantly charging and harvesting the troops and horses led by Li Su. After a fierce chase, Eugene noticed Li Su. Knowing this high dot ranking official is the main commander of this army. He immediately rode away with his horse and spear, intending to slay the enemy general at Sisui Pass. 
During this period of time, Hua Xiong has been beheading their allied generals one after another, and Eugene is also holding back a lot of anger in his heart. I don't know if this person is Hua Xiong, so I rushed over directly. It's Hua Xiong, it happened to be killed. If it's not Hua Xiong, killing it would also be equally beneficial. Amidst the chaos of the army, with the help of some flames and dawn, Li Su was shocked to see an enemy general rushing towards him. He quickly called for his personal guards to protect him. He took advantage of the chaos and left himself. Eugene rushed forward, with a long spear in his hand like a snake spitting out a message, stabbing the two directly, opening the gap, and heading straight towards Li Su. Upon seeing this, Li Su knew that the enemy general was brave, and he felt his heart jump out of his chest. Hua Xiong, save me! Hua Xiong, save me! He let out a loud roar. Stop shouting, Hua Man Zi, anymore. Turns out it's not Hua Xiong. Eugene felt a bit regretful. No one can save you. He let out a loud shout and slammed down his warhorse. This warhorse knew its master's intentions, and its four hooves suddenly exerted force, rushing towards Li Su's side. And Yu Jin's long spear also fiercely stabbed Li Su. Li Su also knew he couldn't escape, and in panic, he fought fiercely with his sword. But although he has some martial arts skills, how can he be the opponent of Yu Ban? After reluctantly parrying for seven rounds, he was shot by Eugene in his right thigh. The piercing pain suddenly came, causing him to sweat profusely. Hua Xiong, save me! In his panic, he shouted again. Eugene sneered, not believing anyone would save this coward at this moment. And Hua Xiong probably never came out this time. Thief! Hua Xiong is here. Don't be arrogant. Just as he was about to burst into action and slay the thief who had sealed off the water, he suddenly heard a loud shout from behind. Upon hearing this, Eugene was surprised to find that Hua Xiong had actually come out. Without considering killing Li Su, he quickly went to pay attention to the back. I saw a general riding on a horse, soaked in blood all over, wielding a knife and roaring towards me. This person naturally does not know Hua Xiong, but rather Li Wen who rushed over from behind, pretending to be Hua Xiong and trying to intimidate Bao Exian's troops. Li Zhonglang, hurry up. This thief general, let me Hua Xiong come and kill him. Although Li Wen felt unwilling in his heart, he still shouted out these words, and then boldly wielded his sword and beheaded Eugene. Li Su naturally recognized that his voice was not right, but at this moment, he didn't care much about speaking or being polite. Only one sentence was said. Okay. Immediately clapping his horse and leaving. Eugene didn't know that Hua Xiong in front of him was fake, so he didn't dare to show any negligence and quickly drew out his gun to confront him. Bang! The long gun collided with the big knife, making a sound. After a confrontation, Eugene couldn't help but be taken aback. Isn't this Hua Xiong so powerful? Absolutely not your own opponent. At the moment, he trembled and fired one gun after another. Puff. After more than a dozen rounds, Eugene was stabbed with a single shot, but Li Wen couldn't dodge and was hit in the throat by a single shot, causing him to fall off his horse. Eugene snatched the long sword from Li Wen's hand and cut off his head with a single blow. He held it in his hand and smiled on his face. Just Hua Xiong, that's all. He spoke out loud. Thinking of Hua Xiong, who had caused many feudal lords to remain silent, being killed by himself, I felt a surge of pride in my heart. Reaching out and hanging his head on the hook below the horse's neck, Eugene carried his gun and troops, continuing to chase after the fleeing General Li Zhonglang pushing forward a bit, within Gong San Zan's camp, Lu Bei and Zhang Fei had already obtained information from Bao Exian. The flames were blazing brightly, indicating that there were news of troops and horses robbing the camp. At this moment, he picked up 500 soldiers and horses brought from Pinyuan County and prepared to leave the camp to fight. Gong Sun Zan rushed over and said, I'll go with him too. 
Hua Xiong is so arrogant that he has been taking consecutive actions. Do you really think no one can kill him? End of this chapter.